Hi, chapter 20, summary of copper deficiency symptoms. So skin, excessive sweating, cold sweats. Copper is the active ingredient in some antiperspirants. Most antiperspirants use aluminum. Copper deficiency can result in intolerance to low body temperature. Uh, easily sunburned, copper is used to make melanin. Before I corrected my copper deficiency, I used to blister from the sun. After taking high copper supplements, I did not get a sunburn and I got the best tan of my life. So difficulty tanning, going from no tan at 10 minutes of sun to getting sunburn at 15 minutes and never tanning from sun exposure, that also copper deficiency. Or being excessively tired after sun exposure. Uh, if the copper is used up to make melanin and if you need copper for energy, then sun exposure while low in copper can make you tired. One of the first things I noticed after taking more copper is that I could get into the tanning booth and not get tired after my typical 10 minutes in the 20 minute tanning bed. Uh, excessive white hair or early graying. Melanin not only helps you to tan, but it's the color for the hair and the skin. So loss of skin pigmentation, which is called vitiligo, the white spots on the skin. Vitiligo is often said to be caused by, quote, sun damage. So copper supplements have been used to cure vitiligo. Uh, sun exposure appears to deplete copper. Uh, or excessive wrinkles and thin skin. And, uh, for example, in smokers, smokers use up their vitamin C. Both vitamin C and copper are needed to make collagen to prevent wrinkles. There is no need for expensive collagen supplements or collagen injections when you can just take very cheap copper and vitamin C supplements. Um, since copper is needed to make collagen, there are connective tissue disorders from lack of collagen, such as heart murmur, erratic heartbeat, abnormal electrocardiogram, hernias, hemorrhoids, joint pain, tendon pains, uh, back and neck pains, weak bones, bulging discs, worn out cartilage, and heart disease. Uh, quote, copper deficiency may be a leading cause of ischemic heart disease. High cholesterol, high blood pressure, aortic aneurysms, bleeding, internal clotting, poor blood circulation, and up to 80 other indicators of heart disease. And in the bones, in the marrow, in the blood. So copper deficiency lead is also associated with uh, arthritis, osteoporosis, gout, an inflammatory form of arthritis, lupus, which is an arthritis-like disease with inflammation, and inflammation because copper is anti-inflammatory, or easily broken bones, or anemia, low red blood cell counts. Copper is needed to help turn iron into blood cells in the bone marrow. Uh, Anemia-like symptoms like fainting, tiredness, mental fog, numbness in the fingers and toes, etc. Bleeding disorders. Copper helps proper red blood cell formation for healthy blood clotting or excessive bruising, which is bleeding. Also, low white blood cell counts and increased infections. Increased bacterial and fungal infections from neutropenia. Quote, update on anemia and neutropenia in copper deficiency. Link. And for the brain and nerves, symptoms of low copper, again, are nerve tingling, numbness in the fingers or toes. I want to go over that in just a second. I just, it came to me here now that there's three different ways. <sighs> numbness in the fingers and toes is often associated in diabetes. And diabetes is associated with copper deficiency. Uh, it's also associated with anemia, and copper is great for anemia. And also copper is great for the nerves in about 15 different ways, as we saw in chapter one. I'm going to go over this again. Symptoms of low copper, nerve tingling, numbness in fingers and, and toes, brain fog, various mental disorders, Alzheimer's, confusion, depression. Again, copper is needed to make the myelin sheath, the, the fatty coating that covers the nerves that allows for faster nerve transmission and better reflexes. And copper also increases neurotransmitters. Other ner nerve disorders, besides peripheral neuropathy, uh, such as multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, Kawasaki disease, and brain cerebral palsy. In extreme, in extreme copper deficiency, there is numbness in the nerves and loss of feeling in the hands or feet, lesions on the spinal cord, and people lose the ability to walk. Seizures can be cured with copper. Depleting copper in mice induces multiple scler sclerosis, and there's a link. Uh, widespread decreases in cerebral copper are common in Parkinson's disease dementia and Alzheimer's disease dementia. Link. Parkinson's is a nerve disorder. Copper is great for the nerves. One of the characteristics of Parkinson's is low dopamine and copper increases dopamine. Uh, also sway back, curved spine, scoliosis. This also appears to be a 
a nerve and bone problem of copper deficiency. So with hormones, symptoms of low copper from low DHEA are low testosterone, weakness, difficulty building muscle, muscle pain, delayed onset muscle soreness from workouts, fibromyalgia pains, and low libido. Also low energy and needing more sleep. Copper deficiency leads to being tired all the time and to excessive napping and brain fog, chronic fatigue syndrome. Again, copper is needed for ATP, for adrenal support, for hormones and neurotransmitters, all of which boost energy. Uh, the next thing, copper deficiency in celiac disease, which is known as gluten intolerance. Uh, and there's also diabetes and hypertension, high blood pressure. A number of disease conditions, including um, diabetes and hypertension, are associated with low extrahepatic tissue copper concentrations. And cancer, can copper has been extensively studied by giving huge amounts to animals. Copper has no cancer-causing function. Copper may help cure or prevent cancer as copper is both an antifungal and is a detoxifying agent. And that's the end of chapter 20. Thank you.